We're continuing our conversation now about the reading crisis and how educators are making critical changes to get students back on track. Children in Penn Hills are already making progress and joining me now is the elementary school principal. We have Kristen Brown here and reading specialist Kristen Marino. Thank you both. You're welcome. And Kristen Marino was featured in Andy's piece last night mm -hmm. and it was just it was so wonderful to see the changes that you all have adopted there. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, thank you. And that boy that I mentioned yep. that was saying that he couldn't do it, I looked at his scores this week. He's actually proficient. <laughs> oh, see, so. it is working. We yes. are seeing that yeah. change. So can we talk first about what we were seeing with the whole language approach? Were, were scores really low? Were they really that bad? Yes. Yeah. I think over time, they became lower and lower and lower. Right. And, you know, before COVID came about, my reading leaders came and said, we gotta do something different. There's, you know, there's the whole science of reading. We need to be looking at this more. We need to be educating our educators on this concept and just how they can be better teachers of reading. And as the principal of the elementary school in Penn Hills, this kind of fell on your shoulders, right? Because right. these are your, these are the young readers. Right. These are the ones who are learning yeah. this. So when you saw that we could go back to the science of reading, you said, we gotta do this. Right, well, I mean, Kristen and her team are, they like eat, sleep, drink, breathe <laughs> the science of reading and what's right for kids. So she's yeah. such a strong advocate for what we need to do differently. So, you know, I'm not, I don't have a reading background, so I rely on them. And then we partnered with the Allegheny Intermediate Unit, brought some of their staff in as well to again, build the capacity of our teachers to teach reading. And so I wanna to talk to you as a reading specialist, you know, I, as soon as I heard sight words, I started to panic because that's right. how my kids learned how right. to read. I mean, that was the first thing. Phonics came in a little bit later, but those sight words were critical for them and memorizing them. Right. So for parents out there who are panicking, what do you do? Well, sir, first of all, in the science of reading world, they say that every word wants to grow up to be a sight word. It's just, well, sight words are not words you memorize. They're words that you recognize automatically. Right. So we could get, there's so much science behind it, but I teach from a speech to print approach. The kids already come into school, into school speaking. So we want to match the speech to the print. And that's what I do. Our language has 44-ish phonemes, sounds. We match them to the graphemes. People argue about how many there are, but one, two, three, or four letters can represent a sound, and we go from there. So walk me through, and, and let's think of a word that you know a first grader would be learning, um, maybe slip. Okay. Okay, so how do we teach with the science of reading how they would learn that word? So I work with the older kids, but for that, I would actually say, first, I would have them say the sounds. Oh, it, I would model it, they would do it. And uh, with some the system I use, we would draw lines. S oh, it, not even have the letters at first. Yeah. Then we go and we then we put the letters on. S oh, it, and then we blend it together. Segmenting, blending. Blending, it, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. But it's really about sounding it out. So with speech to paper. Speech to print, speech absolutely. To print. I, yes. I really like that. Through COVID, I know that we saw a lot of setbacks in different areas of learning. Yes. Did this also make this harder and reading harder? Yes. I, the kids that I worked with last year, they were first graders when th this happened. And to be honest, this set, when we came back, it was an AABB schedule and it was all over the place. Some were on campus, some weren't. And so I told them it's not their fault, but if we teach them the code, and that's what our written language is, it's code for the words we speak. And if you teach them that, they can do it. As principal, do you talk mm -hmm. with other principals in other districts? Are they starting to see the value in going back to this approach? I think so. Everyone knows that this is the way that kids need to learn to read. And yeah. so you're building, again, teacher capacity so they can teach the students. It's a different approach. And we're trying to teach families too, and right. parents as well, because it's different. You know, you were, you were taught just, you know, whole language approach. A lot of our teachers are older teachers, so that's kind of what they learned, but now we're you know, we want to make them aware of what's the, how to do it differently. So interesting that you brought this up because I was just having a conversation with someone about this very thing that is that sometimes the hardest roadblock is that you have teachers who are set in their ways and how they teach. Is that sometimes the hardest thing to try and get them on track and train them to do this? Well, sure. You think of an elementary teacher as like a jack of all trades. You go right. to college and you basically, you know, get a course in reading, a course in math, you right. know, yeah. classroom management. And so then once you develop maybe a master's degree or whatever, you're learning deeper into sp specific disciplines. So we looked at our reading specialists as the experts in our building to tell us That's what to great. do. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and before we go, yes. I do think this is really important because some parents out there might be thinking, well, what do I do if my district isn't approaching this way right. yet? 
and I know that my kids are struggling. You said there are some free resources out there. Right, there are some resources. I was focusing on maybe for the older children and yeah, adults sure. because uh, just to speaking to your uh, speaking to your audience, there are adults out there that maybe have been through trauma because they thought that their brain was broken. They couldn't learn how to read. There's actually actually a documentary, The Truth About Reading, that's out. It's streaming, and it, and then it'll be available even more so. But Ebly, um, they have free videos to teach reading and ebli.com so okay. yes for for older kids and for adults thank you both for yes. coming on and for us. helping to institute a change it was desperately needed and so glad to know that you guys are making progress there thank you thanks thank for you coming for on us. today thank you thank you and if you would like to watch andy's full story it aired last night we have it on our website at kdka.com we'll be right back after the